Okay, on this next side, the Roman army is mainly complete. The Velites cleared away the rest of the uh, hindrance. They've moved right up. Now, they're in a risky position as far as I'm concerned. I think it's very likely that Carthage is going to slide forward a space and try to clear those Velites and send them running. They'll have a chance to recuperate, and there's some space because the Hastardi and the uh, first line have been very slow moving forward. Uh, General's being cautious, right? Supposedly an old cautious man. Well, he's going to clear out the skirmishers, not risk his flank. Only other action happening so far here is uh, the Roman Cav activated. And, you know, it's kind of funny, even with uh, attacker superiority and everything, they still, after the static position, after they charged in, taking, uh, trying to take those Numenidians on, they still end up running away. It's, you know, just, they're so potent uh, with their eight morale, etc. And now, Carthage is going to be able to slam in and, and do some uh, some flank attacks or rear attacks on these calf back here. <coughs> and most of the uh, most of the Carthaginian leaders, in fact, all of them are still available. All of Rome has is its overall commander, and he doesn't have a lot he can do. He can rally some forces, or he can move the principes forward, but that's about it. We've seen the Carthaginian light infantry move forward basically chase the Velites away. Now they've broken formation because uh, even though they succeeded in every single attack uh, they ended up facing one or two to one in each case so only half their units could advance. Kind of a, a shame to see that break up. They're going to have to reform. Um, Mago's Cav came in and mostly knocked out the rest of the Roman Cav. What do we got here? Oh, this shouldn't be facing this way. We should be facing somehow like this. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's pretty much broken it. He knocked one into the dead pile up there and has some of his lancers uh, pursuing that, which is... You know, it's one of the things is the cab's broken. You kind of wish you hadn't wiped it out because it's going to be harder to get a. It, it's going to be a hard decision whether or not to get that back if the Numenidians and the heavy are still free. But you'd really like to have the extra cab. They have so few this time. Still got a couple of pieces, a uh, couple of leaders to move. Um, whoever our leader is who's being represented by Denitus. Doesn't have a lot he can do. He's probably going to rally and and uh, reform units rather than bring the principes forward. And then back here with our Hasdrubal, who's probably the wrong counter. We should have a Hasdrubal, the bald counter. I'm going to look, make sure I don't because I think I remember having one. Uh, again, probably wants to reform units. Maybe wants to go rally these skirmishers. See if something can be done of use with them. I tried the. Um, Tactics move forward and fire, and both sides took a hit, which is more or less what you'd predict. You know, I, I think it's actually advantageous, though. Um, it gives the Romans something they have to do to either recover, or they attack them in slightly worse shape and end up a little weaker after facing them. Because, quite frankly, when a Velite comes up against the skirmisher, the skirmisher's gone. It, it's whether or not the skirmisher, you know, withdraws or just runs or... <laughs> Uh, you know, so whatever tactical quality they have on them doesn't really matter too much. The speed bump's still the speed bump, and the more damage they can do on the way, it may be the best. So I guess the skirmishing tactics might have helped a little bit. I'm not sure how much, because in the end, you'd have to hit with the light infantry, and the light infantry did pretty well. But where we're talking on this side, those guys might have been able to use the help. So here we are after the initial engagement. Everything's kind of cleared up. Uh, Hasdrubal didn't do as good a job rallying those skirmishers as he thought. He got a lot of momentum. Managed to get the light infantry in pretty good order, but the skirmishers, a lot of them broke. Um, for the Romans, they also <coughs> haven't been uh, terribly 
actually worried about rallying their valetes. They don't have a lot of leaders. They want to, um, They used them early for the most part, and then they get broken, and they, they're going to have a chance to try to get that. Likewise with the cab, it's running. The leader's back here. It's going to be a long walk home uh, to find his units and then bring them back. They may not get a chance to get off the map, uh, to stay on the map. The uh, points for this, uh, remarkably even, they each got 16 points, but the Romans lost real stuff. Carthaginians only lost their skirmishers, piles of skirmishers and an elephant. Elephants don't really count uh, any more than the skirmishers do. They're short use, but possibly potent, but the Velites kind of keep it from getting to anything valuable. Um, so with 16 points each, we're still at the same position. Carthage has 22, Rome has 20. Right now, I'd say it's favoring Carthage in terms of what's happening, but I still think the battle overall is so favorable to Rome that you know those legionary infantry are just going to punch a hole through this stuff. We've seen it again and again. As long as Carthage doesn't have the cav, and they really don't have a lot of it here, they're not going to be able to really hold their own against Rome. But we'll see. And now the battle's engaged in earnest. The uh, Roman line surged forward. This is Hestardi and some of the cohort just smashing forward into those lights. We'll see what happens in a moment. And on this first clash, a little bit of Romans uh, fell apart there. Some of the uh, light infantry over here, the Sardinians ran too. But otherwise, we're actually going to be engaging all across this line back again. And after that first real clash, we see what happens. First of all, the Sardinians just turned and run. Uh, they really couldn't handle it. Now, the heavy legionary infantry has an advantage against the lighter infantry when it's attacking. It also has it on defense. Uh, against the medium infantry, though, it has an attack advantage, but the medium infantry, I believe, does not give an advantage to the defender being legions. So here's what the Carthaginians want to do. They want to hit this, especially with their mediums, but also with the phalanx, and try to brush it back. But the problem is there's a bunch of routing stuff in the way. By creating the speed bump uh, that the light infantry really is, they have also made a mess in front of their line that they can't get through. And that may give the Romans enough time to rally their forces. On the other hand, it may uh, behoove the Carthaginians to try to re resurrect that speed bump and keep a padding in the way because it's the cav that's going to win them the game if they can. Over here, we see the uh, better Iberian lights actually managed to fend a little better for themselves. A couple of Roman units routing, but the, most of that line ran. However, because it was in two lines, broken up, remember how they lost formation before? That actually gives them an advantage. Because the Romans had to hit the one line, uh, the forward line, and they broke that, but then they had to come forward and hit this other line. So they're being slowed more completely by the dual line staggered uh, formation. I actually really like that formation for the light infantry probably should have set up the other guys in something like it, but it feels so wrong to break your line command uh, ability up by putting staggered formations like that. With troops that are reasonable and have a chance of surviving uh, the combat, and these lights aren't that bad, um, it's a little more potent than not. Than, than when uh, the troops aren't. But it also breaks up the Roman line. The Roman advance, you'll see, is staggered now. And that's to their disadvantage, I think. So overall, I think having the line broken up the way it was, was to the Carthaginians' advantage. Well, let's see if we get momentum good. I didn't know what to do with it if I got it. I probably shouldn't roll for it if I don't know what to do with it, but that's going to give another Roman turn. It'll be over here somewhere. I forgot to flip him. Alright, well, another short turn, another die roll of doom, double nines, uh, trying to get this guy to unwrap these units. I think all that really means is 
some more Romans are going to leave the map. These guys are going to come charging forward. Uh, and... I don't know what else. Just, uh, yeah, we got this whole line routing here, so... That's not going to be able to be rallied and turned around. Can't be good news for the uh, for the Carthaginians though, because yeah, they got so much of their stuff running there, down to one more line basically, and there was a hope to rally these guys, but now it's going to be the main line of troops fighting. Now those routed guys, yeah, you may still have to pay attention and try to rally them, but there's going to be another hit before. Get a chance probably. And once again the Romans got an advantageous die roll of doom early in the uh, turn. In this case they managed to move um, and drive off a couple black slingers down here maybe kind of improve their situation in terms of rallying some units back here up in the front. They moved their principes forward and that's about it. That's where things ended and uh, beyond that, well, once again, Carthage is unable to rally their forces. They didn't want a Trump to do that because the only real re threat here was the Dire Hall of Doom situation. But now everything's going to run and they're going to be facing that uh, first line and the second line's getting a bit closer. Uh, the feeling here, though, is one thing the Romans didn't get to do was they didn't get to replenish their front line. Their leaders had, their their army had run ahead of their leaders enough that doing back uh, field stuff to try to fix themselves was the only real option they had, or it seemed the best option. And so they kind of lucked out here by getting to move people up a little bit, but they're still not in position to help the. Uh, the front line, they don't have anybody right up there. Let's see what, how this turns out, but uh, they also removed their cav leader, who has no command anymore. All this stuff is not his. All right, well, on to another turn. And we can see we're at the beginning of the turn, but the uh, routed troops are streaming down on both sides of the main uh, Carthaginian line. This is all they have left. They might be able to rally some of these, but they don't have a lot of leaders in place. They haven't been able to trigger their calf to do anything. It doesn't look like they're getting the movement that they need to, uh, to do. Meanwhile, Roman units are routing right into the commander. Gets one last chance to stop them. He's not very good, so it's not a very good chance, but he might as well do that. He's not going to be able to do much else. Um, up here for points, the Romans collect five more them up to a 41. We're not seeing a lot of fighting here, right? And 13 for Carthage. Come up to 35. Anyway, I'll wrap this one, send it up, and we'll get going on the battle some more.